Good, good morning, good afternoon. My name is Alejandro Saucedo. I'm the chief scientist of the Institute for Ethical AI and Machine Learning. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the state of machine learning operations in 2019. I'm going to be covering a high level overview of the ecosystem. So I'm going to try to go through several topics within 10 minutes. You'll have several reading material that you can access uh, to check more. So to get started, the motivations is to give an overview of data science projects uh, uh, and more specifically the small ones. When you have the traditional um, sort of data science workflows where you get data, you clean it, select some features, iterate, and build your model. Um, when you're happy, you can put it in production, perhaps wrap it on a Flask service, um, you know, perhaps just you know, do a very simple web app around it. Uh, it works relatively well. There's not that many problems. However, as the data science team grows and the requirements grow, there's an increasing complexity of the flow of the data. Each data scientist wants to use their own tools. They have their favorite languages. Um, serving models becomes increasingly harder. And also when stuff goes wrong, it's really harder to trace it back. As your technical function grows, also should your infrastructure. And this is why um, it's challenging because we're dealing with the intersection of data science, software engineering, and DevOps um, creating this you know, intersection of machine learning engineering, b bringing best practices from each field. And that's why we created a list of, uh, a curated list of libraries to deploy, version, monitor, uh, and scale your machine learning. Uh, we're not going to have time to cover the entire list, which focuses on our eight principles for responsible machine learning. But what we're going to cover today is three principles, responsibility, orchestration, and explainability. So the first one focuses, uh, very similar to what was discussed in the previous speaker, in, on the data and model provenance and versioning of them. And this, this often um, uh, is explained as the abstraction of the, the pipeline on its computational steps. And this is primarily on separating them on the data that is coming in, the actual code and configuration, and then the data that is coming out. By abstracting this atomic step, it allows us to go even one level higher and have our entire pipeline or entire ETL pipeline abstracted in this sort of compliance uh, 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 perspective. And there are several libraries that are trying to tackle this challenge of reproducibility, running something in one environment, being able to get the same result in the other side. And some of the libraries to watch, they're not just the ones that I'm going to mention, but um, one includes data version control. It's a Git-like client that allows you to uh, 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 do version management of your data, code, and output so that you can actually track and version every single step. Uh, ModelDB, it takes it in a different step, uh, in a, a different approach. It actually allows you to track all of the inputs and outputs that your code generates and then gives you a dashboard to be able to visualize the, uh, the, the performance of all the models and all of the experiments that you've run. Uh, finally, Pachyderm is a, 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 a framework that allows you to actually build, as they call it, compliance machine learning pipelines. And this, uh, this, this means that you can uh, uh, be able to store and version every single run of your uh, inference pipeline. So if you have a machine learning model that is trained in, in production, you, every time that it runs, it would actually store uh, every, everything that goes in and out. The second one is model orchestration, training and serving at scale. This involves computational resource allocation, which is hard because it's like building an operating system which is completely distributed and your resources are all your nodes. Uh, however, there, there's been a lot of really interesting areas which I'm going to delve. One of them, Algorithmia, this uh, startup in the US, has a very interesting uh, comparison of the usage of traditional service, uh, servers versus uh, um, um, uh, 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 um, uh, their actual usage. And they actually show uh, all of the unused space that they have by just having those servers at all times. By using elastic servers, you still have some inefficiencies. And by using uh, serverless, you know, it actually becomes more efficient. There was actually a very interesting paper that was published a few weeks ago that was taken with a lot of criticism in the serverless space because that actually highlighted some of the uh, you know, uh, 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 downsides that right now serverless doesn't yet have. And I would recommend you to check it out. Uh, one of the things that I didn't mention is that you can access the slides uh, on that corner on bit.ly slash mlops19. Um, ones that, uh, a few libraries to watch include Selden, which does orchestration primarily on TensorFlow uh, uh, servers. Uh, uh, the second one is MLLeap, which dives into the serialization of models. So it actually converts the trained models into JSON equivalents and then loads them back again and runs them across, I think it's three, three libraries. 
And the, finally one, the final one is Deep Detect, which covers a broader set of, of machine learning frameworks, and it builds a unified API to be able to interact with all of them for training and inference, which I, I recommend to check out. The last one is on explainability. This, allows, uh, this covers the challenge of explaining and understanding black box model situations. Um, this requires going beyond the algorithms through not just the, the machine learning best practices, but through tools, process, and domain expertise. The way that we've uh, uh, often tackled it in a talk that we, we also link is through three main steps, data analysis, model analysis, and finally, production monitoring. Uh, the data assessment includes like, things like class imbalances, assessment of protected features, understand, uh, understanding correlations. Uh, the model assessment is understanding feature importance, you know, using model-specific methods. And final one is the model uh, production monitoring, which is assu assuming that as soon as you put a model in production, it has the danger of starting to diverge, uh, whether it's because of the data changes or another reason. So it's important to set metrics up front to be able to monitor that. Uh, some libraries to watch include uh, LE5, Explain Like I'm 5, which allow, has several uh, uh, tools to be able to open up models, both from the NLP side, image, and uh, uh, um, tabular data. The second one is SHAP, which is a unified set of uh, best practices that have been brought together uh, and represented as shapely uh, values. Uh, they have model-specific as well as uh, model-agnostic approaches and allows you to visualize in a neural network, for example, what are the areas of the network that, uh, that, that influence most that result. And the last one is one that we're maintaining. It's called XAI, which uh, allows you to analyze data sets as well as models and set metrics to monitor in production. All of them, all the links are set below. You can access them when looking at the presentation. And unfortunately, 10 minutes is definitely far from enough to be able to cover all of the challenges that you face, especially now with this intersection in machine learning. And that's why you know, I recommend you to go check out some of the uh, open source projects that are there. Um, you know, the list itself is open source, so if there is libraries that you know uh, that are not currently there, please feel free to add them. And also jump in and contribute. Uh, the majority of the projects are open source, except the two ones in the bottom with the uh, dollar signs, uh, which are commercial. Uh, but, well, there's some open core as well in the other ones, but um, I do recommend to check them out. And um, yeah, so with that said, uh, you know, I managed to do it on time, which is, you know, I'm quite happy. And uh, we have, I guess, time for one question. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.